three, two, one, and we are live for a new episode of the Electric Podcast. I'm Fred Lambert, your host, and I'm joined by Seth Wintraub. How are you doing this week, Seth? I'm good. All right. Um, first off, a quick word from our sponsor. This episode of the Electric Podcast is brought to you by the all-new, all-electric Volkswagen ID4 SUV with zero direct emissions. It's the first electric vehicle for everyone. Before it can change the world, it has to change yours. Thank you, Volkswagens for spons- Volkswagen, for sponsoring the show. We're going to have a little more to talk about them later on, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you're a fan of the show and you're listening right now, please give us a thumbs up. It'll help push the streams to more people and uh, help discover the show and um, promote uh, electrification. We appreciate when you do that. You can also hit the subscribe button because last I checked, 90% of you watching are not subscribed. What's that about, people? Do that. And um, that's it. We're going to jump into the news right now. It was kind of a slow week this week in the EV news world. I'm not going to lie. But we still have a few interesting things to talk about. We're going to get into that. Uh, so what, what could happen, actually, could uh, lead us to, to to spend more time answering you guys' questions and, and discussing other topics that you guys want to talk about. So if um, you're into that, you can put that in the comment section right now. And we're going to discuss live on the show later on. But let's jump in with... Um, I mean, almost every other week, we, we talked about the Tesla price increases and uh, we, we talked about the actual price increase without the, the reasons behind them, uh, which Tesla never really discloses. But uh, now Elon sort of touched the subject a little bit and explained um, what, what is happening with the Tesla prices, which uh, if you haven't been following, Tesla has been increasing the price, especially with the Model 3, Model Y, incrementally by like $500 each increment uh, over the past like three or four months. Uh, resulting in like a $2,500 price increase on Model 3 and it's like $2,000 price increase on Model Y. So quite quite a significant price increase over time, but like with each $500 increment. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation around the reason before that. Before that, it's just, just Tesla taking advantage of strong demand in the US, which we, we know has been happening. Uh, and then oh, is, it, is it cost increases that uh, they are passing on to the consumers? Uh, to maintain a gross margin, especially with supply chain issues that have been talked about in the last few months? Or is it, it there's been the other big theory too that Tesla could be preparing for the uh, reform of the federal tax credit and getting back access to it for the Tesla vehicles and then uh, working on a better gross margin with that by increasing the prices. So, Or it could be like a combination of all of that too, which uh, we also discussed. But uh, basically, Elon confirmed this week that is... Um, it is due to the cost increasing. So he said that the price increasing due to major supply chain pressure industry-wide, raw materials especially. So uh, we, we've talked about uh, some, some some supply chain issues, especially regarding the micro microchip shortage that the uh, industry has been experiencing now for, uh, for the last few months. And uh, it resulted in production alts for a lot of the makers, including Tesla, uh, for a little while, I'm, I want to say in February. But um, other things happened too, like uh, well, this this week. What, what prompt actually Elon commenting on that was the uh, the lumbar, the passenger lumbar supports uh, fiasco that happened earlier this week. So Tesla started delivering a few new Model Y without lumbar uh, support adjustments on the passenger side, uh, front passenger side, with new Model Y. Uh, without disclosing this disclosing it like people were like kind of surprised they took delivery and like hey i don't see the front passenger lumbar support so elon said that uh, the cost of that has increased and the uh tesla did their own analysis and you know how tesla has is, is tesla vehicles are just so connected that they have all the data and everything and they even apparently have the data to, of how many people use the lumbar uh, settings on the front passenger side and Elon uh, said that there were just not enough people using it, that it made sense uh, with the price increase. So they cut it out. Um, in our report about that, we did uh, mention that Tesla is not alone in this. Like uh, even uh, uh, BMW on the on the i uh, X3 SUV uh, had the same issue. So they, they ended up removing it. However, while removing it, they also decreased the price of the vehicle um, for removing the um, the feature. Uh, Tesla didn't do that actually, and and, and as we reported before, the, the price kept increasing. So uh, Tesla is really kind of scrambling to 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 cut some costs to maintain the gross margin here, 
and uh, we we won't see anything on the consumer side. It's all about uh, it's all about cutting costs right now. It sounds like it. So, did they cut the cost? I mean, did they cut it out because they wanted to save like processor stuff for other vehicles, or is it just a money thing? Do you think you know they're trying to save a few bucks and not raise the price just across the board? Is it specific? Yeah, it sounds like it's purely like a cost situation. Like my understanding, like these comments. I mean, again, this is Twitter. Like people, so, so like the the questions and answers are quite limited in information. But the way he said it, it sounded like the cost of uh, this lumbar support setting here is um, as increased, and I assume across the board. Um, and of course, the one on the on the driver's side is more important. So the the with the data, they figure out not a lot of people are using it on, on the passenger side. So we can just cut some costs there uh, without having too much impact on on consumer experience. But yeah, it sounds like it's all cost related. Like even the cost of that increase. Um, I mean, I assume that there's a micro microcontroller involved in this too. So that probably like goes back to the microchip shortage. Right. A, lot, a lot of people are, are are switching to microcontrollers because of uh, the the chip shortage. So now the price of microcontrollers are also increasing. So this is like kind of a a snowball effect across the entire industry. Yeah, but I mean, so a lot of people like I I know that he's probably right in terms of statistics. Like a lot of people are not using it. Uh, I'm a big fan of like lumbar. So if, if you you know how to use it wide, right with with your position, the way you're seating, uh, it it's extremely valuable, especially for longer drives. Like for shorter drives, it doesn't make it doesn't make a big difference. So I guess for the for the passenger, that's that's the reason why. But you know, do 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 you change it the lumbar support when you get you get in the passenger seat of a car? In the passenger seat, yeah, uh, not really. But I'm usually driving, so yeah, I'm not a good example. Um, I am like, you know, <clears throat> we did just come back from Vermont this week and I, uh, actually I had to sit in the back because my two kids were fighting and, uh, my wife was driving and, uh, the back seat is not as comfortable as I remember it, at least after a couple <laughs> hours, like they, yeah, they need I mean, to focus they, on that stuff. Yeah, for sure. When, well, I mean, it's never comfortable to go in the back seat of most car <laughs> there for a couple hours and stuff. Uh, it takes me back to being a kid on a road trip with my parents and being stuck in the back seat. Especially, that I have some motion sickness from the back seat, so that that that, that doesn't help at all. And then punching your brother. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, so yeah, that that pretty much explained the the price increases. So next time that happens, we we know we we know what's behind it really, and we're gonna keep an eye on that. I wouldn't be surprised if it, it keeps increasing because especially when it, if. If, when it's related to the chip shortage, because um, most chip manufacturer right now are, are, are looking at the increasing production, of course, to, to match a new demand for it. Um, but he, a, a lot of people see this this situation lasting for a relatively long time. I, I think the in, Intel CEO said that it could last a couple of years at least yeah. until we can catch up, because you cannot t turn uh, chip manufacturing uh, uh, production capacity on, on a dime. Like it, it takes a little while to to ramp it up. All right. Um, okay, that happened yesterday. Like, uh, if you've been a Tesla investor, it hasn't been that much of a fun ride in the last few months. The stock has, has taken a significant hit. Uh, it retreated back from from a high from uh, early in the year, and uh, now a new report came out yesterday that that made the, the stock crash uh, briefly. Uh, at least it, it's back up today, so it's not too bad. But uh, when the report came out, like it was a, an instant like four percent drop, which of course wipes out billions of dollars when it comes to Tesla. And um, the this report in question was interesting. It came from the information, so which is a, a somewhat respected like tech tech publication, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, the the reported based on something that we don't hear a lot from Tesla, at least lately, uh, it's net new orders. They claim to have the, the internal data for net new orders in China. Um, and uh, they claim that that crashed over the last few months to now uh, just 9,800 in May, uh, which is about half of what they had in April and uh, way down from uh, over 21,000 in March, which was the, the high that they had after the the ramp up from the launch of the Model Y. So we're not talking about deliveries here. We're talking about net new orders, so pure like sales um, before deliveries. 
And uh, I mean, I we're known at Electric at having some some pretty good sources at Tesla and everything. And and we did get that information like maybe I want to say like a few years ago. We got some good good numbers on new sales and everything. But Tesla has tightened up a lot in terms of like we get access to that information over the last few years, and we we haven't been able to get access to it for a while, as you as you can figure out for yourself from our reporting we do get some some decent information uh that we, we can gauge uh from other data but net new orders tesla keeps that very tight to a close circle so that's why I, I was surprised to see that in the first place because um the information claimed to have one unnamed source that has that information in china and I, knowing what i know it would have to be like kind of a high up source uh, to to get that, so I, I was I was I'm not I'm not necessarily skeptical about it. Like uh, they, they they could have that, but uh, it, it it is it, it is notable in, in itself. Uh, so of course the the reason why the cra the the stock crashed is because we know that China is a very important market for Tesla in, uh, in short term and long term, uh, especially in the second half of this year. We we expect a lot of Tesla's growth is associated to to ramping up Model Y uh, deliveries in China, and so so the fact that orders are, are, are somewhat crashing really a uh, uh, fifty percent drop month to month, but um, well yeah I'm taking the report with a grain of salt for what I just said because of I know how high up the source needs to be for that information to be correct, and secondly month to month. Tesla's Tesla's data is always kind of wild, so I, I think it's still significant that the the sales are. So I'm not I'm not like being an apologist of Tesla, like oh like everything is fine and like uh, what the monkey thing, like you don't see anything or whatnot. But um, yeah, it, 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 it's not dramatic. I think like it, Tesla had a tough month last month for sure in the media in China. We reported on some of the issues, like the crazy situation with the woman that. Uh, uh, had a crash with her father in a Model 3 and then went on a, to have like some weird demonstration at Tesla stores and then a demonstration at the Shanghai Motor Show at Tesla's boot and the police got involved and it was a very wild situation. But um, and, and then the whole military banning Tesla cars and then the highway stuff where where Tesla was were, were being stopped and then the police claimed no we weren't we weren't just stopping Tesla but then a bunch of Tesla owner reported that they were just stopping Tesla cars very very strange situation there that uh, probably affected Tesla's public image resulting in this, this this drop in orders but the way I see it like. It's peak and valleys. Like the, the, this is definitely a valley, and and then it can come back up pretty clearly with, with just with just some better marketing, some better uh, PR from Tesla. And you know what? That's what I reported in my, in my article. Tesla is picking up actually uh, a lot more PR people in China. Uh, of course, they did this all their department here in the U.S. Uh, last year, late last year, but in. Um, in China, we, we we noted that they still have a PR team there. They have a marketing team, and uh, they, they in the over the last month they actually ramped up hiring for that team based on job listing on Tesla's Chinese side. So that that's something, I guess. So I have a couple of things with mm. uh, points on this. So one, it does seem like, I mean, we've seen like uh, the the meet you know the the Tesla fans and the Tesla Q uh, both like saying, you know, the media is biased one way or the other. It does seem like China's media has been super anti-Tesla recently. Um, and, you know, who knows how true that is over there. Um, but, you know, we, we do get the Global Times uh, articles mm -hmm. quite a bit, which is a Chinese state-run media. Um, and it just seems like they're piling on. Um, you know, om almost every week they have like a, a new article about some Tesla that breaks didn't work or... Uh, caught on fire or whatever so it like you know i hate to be paranoid but it does seem like there's a you know a state-run negative campaign against tesla going on right now um that said um the global times ran a, a story today or uh early today late yesterday for them um where they so the global times quoted i'll just read it tesla sales in may are expected to be near 
the level of April, says uh, Kui Dongshu, Secretary General of the China Passenger Car Association, told the Global Times on Friday. So that kind of refutes the... Uh, and we not, got not necessarily because I, I I think when when you talk about sales, you talk about delivered vehicles. So, mm -hmm. so they, they expect they were a similar number of vehicle as they did last month. Uh, th this is not a great function of demand. The the report was that that, that was was really special about the reports is that they claim to have internal information from Tesla about net new orders, which mm -hmm. they wouldn't the passenger car association wouldn't really have access to that. They will have access to production number and delivery numbers. So that that's a big difference here. Yeah, but he says sales, not well. Not... Sales is is vehicles that, like Tesla doesn't account for a sale until the vehicle is delivered. Right. It, it wouldn't be the same at net new orders. Um, also, and since Tesla, the so you're saying it's a trailing month, like yeah. I mean, you, you, the the best. The best indicator of demand is the net new orders that you get every every month. Uh -huh. uh, Tesla even said that. I mean, I mean, I think uh, was it last. Um, was it the last earning calls that Elon said that they are, they are seeing their best month for new, new net orders? So uh, that, that's important. But with, with Tesla in China specifically, now that they are exporting cars from uh, Gigafactory Shanghai, it's uh, it, it's a completely different different situation. Like you, you cannot really follow those month to month deliveries in in China because uh, uh, if if there's a month that Tesla end up shipping more cars to Europe to Australia wherever they're going to ship them right that's a good it's point gonna, it's going to it's going to affect the the monthly deliveries there so 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 yeah i mean the best metric is definitely net new orders uh which the information claims to have and that's really the only the only place you, you can get it if if it's accurate but again we we don't know that uh but yeah to your point about uh the media reaction to Tesla in, in China right now it does seem like it but at the same time like we we, we get very limited exposure to, to Chinese media here like right so, and so, we're only using the English for the most part not the yeah yeah local stuff because because apparently like Tesla is extremely popular on social media there in China we know we know that's uh that's how most people get their news these days I mean here I, I assume it's similar in China I wouldn't be surprised um yeah but it, I mean I I come back to um Adam Jonas, the the um, analyst from Morgan Stanley that covers Tesla, he's had some some pretty strong opinions about that for a while now that he's been saying that people should be careful about Tesla's prospect in China because because of how much control the, the government has. And I, I've been kind of weirded out by that because technically China has been extremely welcoming to Tesla. Right. Like Tesla was the first automaker to actually get a fully owned factory. In the country, from a fully owned car factory in in the country, uh, and electric car at that. So th this was a, a giant, a giant step for Tesla, and, and and put them in a very good position compared to to other automakers in the in, in the country where who have to have joint venture with state owned um, manufacturer, car manufacturer. It's it's a big was a big big deal. Um, so it would be kind of strange, I guess, that they'd be like walking back on that and now try to to make it like to make Tesla try to make Tesla fail in the country after doing that. But but I mean I don't I don't know. It's it, it is a strange situation. Uh, that I can uh, that much I can say. All right, uh, now in a little bit uh, more uh, fun part. Uh, Tesla Diner, the Tesla 15s, 50s Diner that we've been talking about for a while. Uh, Elon announced that, I think, back in 2018. Uh, yeah, in the uh, Santa Monica location, where they, they've, it's been a long time that they've been trying to build that supercharger in Santa Monica, but it's uh, it's not that easy. The real estate there is extremely valuable, and uh, trying to build something, uh, especially on Santa Monica Boulevard, I think I think you're trying to, to do it. it. It's not easy, and they've been uh, jumping through the hoops trying to uh, get, get that done, and it's been lagging for a while. In more recent months, they've been doing a lot of progress uh, to, to do it. Um, they, they've been trying to acquire the building permits there. And uh, apparently, they, it was moving forward uh, as of March uh, for a supercharger station there. But the there was no mention of a, of a restaurant anymore, which they which they had back then, back in 2018, when they first applied for a permit to build a supercharger. They, they were also uh, applying for a permit for, for a, a restaurant. 
Elon has been talking about like a 50s diners where the waiters on roller skates and they bring you the food on your car while you, while you wait you wait to charge in the car and then you also like see movies and like a, a screen on a projector on the screen and they play some classic movies there so that that was his, his vision for it kind of kind of crazy uh like old school 50s diner but now, uh, right after the new permit application for just a supercharger with no mention of a restaurant, Elon came back and like, we're still planning to do a restaurant on it uh, th this year. And then uh, that now it's not just Elon's word anymore about it. Uh, Tesla actually applied a trademark to use their brand, the Tesla brand, the Tesla logo, um, on uh, for the restoration and the restaurant services and industry so the trademark registration is intended to cover the categories of restaurant services pop-up restaurant service self-service restaurant services takeout restaurant services. so basically any type of restaurant that, <laughs> that exists um they they they're gonna have the the name tesla for it so so if if that project goes through which sounds like they're working for it to make it happen it's going to be a Tesla branded restaurant. So it's not going to be necessarily like a partnership with another brand. It might still be a partnership with, with a restaurant manager. Or like the, I know that a lot of uh, company that manage restaurants, but they don't necessarily have a specific brand. Like they, they will own like a, a McDonald's, but they also own like a Wendy's, whatever. Like they just, they, they're just good at managing restaurants. So they will franchise other, other people's brand. But, um, and actually, it wouldn't kind of make sense since Tesla has no experience in. in, in uh, I keep wanting to say restoration because because that that's the word of the restaurant industry in French. Is, is there is it the restaurant industry? I guess there's no yeah, word for it. That's fine. <laughs> hey, I was just thinking, uh, and I think you might have mentioned this earlier, but uh, I know somebody Elon knows that has some restaurant yeah. experience. Yeah, that's uh, his brother Kimball, who's also a board member in Tesla. Yeah, that, that, that that's a good point. I mean, uh, he does have a chain of uh, restaurant called uh, the Kitchen, I think, or just Kitchen, the Kitchen yeah. or just Kitchen, and uh, he's a successful restaurateur. That's <laughs> uh, the word. He, that's that's a word. That, well, yeah, you still that in yeah. French, but you don't steal restoration for the for, for the restaurant industry. All right. To quote well, George the, Bush, "There's no yeah. word for entrepreneur in French, unfortunately." So, in French, did he say that? <laughs> It is a French word, you yeah. dumb dumb. Uh, um, but that's that's a very George Bush thing to say. Okay, uh, what, what was I going with? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Kimball, Kimball Musk is. Uh, he went to uh, culinary school in New York, and he's a legit like chef, like a trained chef. And he opened a bunch of restaurants. I think starting in Colorado, but now they they uh, think he's also like in Tennessee and a bunch of other places. Uh, so very yeah, they successful. could do they could do like a Solar City with that, just like. Buy up the restaurants, then, boom, Tesla restaurants, Tesla food. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it could be, it could be an interesting mix. I mean, like a lot of people say it's a distraction, everything, but like if you want to stop looking at all Elon Musk's all crazy antics and everything, because of course, when when he first announced that, everyone was like, "Is, is this another of Elon's jokes? Like, what what is it? Like, uh, and everything." But at the end of the day, it, it does make sense to have the, the to own also the animities around the charging because you have a captive audience for for a certain period of time when you when you're charging. Hopefully, uh, not that long because <laughs> you want right. to accelerate the charging time and, and shorten the charging session time. But still, uh, it, it's it's part of the EV ownership experience. So you want to make it better. And right now, the best experience we have really is. Not everywhere, first of all, but most places that try to build, uh, to, to build their, their supercharger stations ar around um, like truck stops or, or, or just places that have a few restaurants. Uh, you have a few options and everything. But I mean, the ones that I've been to most of the time, it's not that great. Like you, so, so, so to have something that caters, like that you have some control over, um, would would make the experience better, in my opinion. For sure. Yeah. I mean, we when we're going like to uh, you know south or whatever, there's like Tesla superchargers at, at almost every exit, uh, you know, going through New Jersey um, and Pennsylvania. Uh, we will actually you know go on Google Maps, find out what's at each supercharger station, and say, uh, you know, we don't like that restaurant mm -hmm. or whatever, and we go to the next one or the next one. And we have, I mean, because there's so many superchargers out there now, it's, you have the options. Yeah. We have yeah. options. Yeah. 
I mean, that, that that's true. It's not true everywhere, though. That's the problem. A lot of places, like, you, you end up and you have, like, a McDonald's or a Burger King. Like, it's that, those are your options. Right. And, I mean, nowadays, it's like, true, but but back in the day when uh, when you had, like, uh, when all the Teslas cost $100,000, yeah, a lot, a lot of people that are used to, uh, they didn't even know that McDonald's is a thing. <laughs> they like, oh, like, a, a $2 burger? What are you talking about? Like, that's a... I've never eaten a burger that's less than 25 bucks. Right. With Wagyu, with Wagyu meat and, and everything. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it would be interesting to see how, how that plays out. And uh, then if it's successful, then you, you do what Tesla has, has been very good at doing is like replicate the winning formula to other places. Yeah. All right. We have a few more articles to discuss, but again, not that many because it's been a slow week. But so if you guys have any questions or subjects in the EV world, in the green technology world that you guys want to discuss, uh, put them in the comment section below right now. If you are watching on YouTube, Facebook or Twitter, and uh, we're going to get to it in the second half of the show. But uh, before we discuss the last three pieces of news, uh, a quick word from Volkswagen and the ID4 electric SUV. All right. The all new, all electric Volkswagen ID4 SUV with zero direct emissions was created for everyone. You'll get tech features that make you wonder how you ever survived without them, like a powerful voice control system with an optional panoramic glass roof. All you have to do is say, Hello, ID, open sunshade to enjoy the sunshine hands free. Before it can change the world, it has to change yours. Learn more at vw.com slash ID4. Yes. All right. The next little piece of news is the Tesla Model S Play, Plaid. Plaid. I don't, I don't like that word. Um, but it is the new top performance Tesla vehicle that we're going to learn about more next week if the, if the delivery event is not delayed again on June 10th. But uh, it looks extremely likely now that Tesla is going to announce a new world record quarter mile performance for the Tesla Model S. And that information comes to us uh, thanks to Jay Leno, none other than the famous comedian and Tonight Show O's turned basically car reviewer now. Like, uh, it's, Yeah, uh, his, his garage show is kind of a big deal. Yeah, and I would argue that uh, he's better at that than you as at the Tonight Show and everything. Like, I won't. I mean, or at least I won't. He, it, I, I've never been a that. fan of those. Like, I've never been a big fan. Like, obviously, he was extremely successful at it and everything. Right. But I mean, y you can see that he's way more passionate about that than than the show. Like, uh, but at the same time, that that wouldn't probably exist without the show because right. that show paid for his insane collection of cars. Like, you guys need to Google Jay Leno's Garage. Like, I mean, no, Jay Leno's Garage is literally the name of his show, so you're gonna get his shows, which is good. You can watch that too, but. I, if you can find a video of uh, just a tour of his of his actual garage, which garage is not a good name for it, it's it's like a collection of warehouses filled with cars. <laughs> it's insane. in L.A., which is like a not a cheap place to have a collection of cars. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but yeah, Jill, I know uh, he went on the Spikes Car Radio podcast, and he he said that last month he went to the Famoso Raceway in Bakersfield. And uh, it's a drag strip. And he, he went there and he saw that uh, Tesla brought a Tesla Model S uh, Plaid prototype. Sorry. The Plaid or the Plaid Plus? Well, he said Plaid. He didn't say Plaid Plus. And I would assume it's a Plaid just based on the time that it got. Uh, because apparently Tesla is thinking about something even crazier for the Plus. And, and also... The plot, it would be weird for Tesla to 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 do things with the Plaid Plus right now, just because of uh, it, it's still like a year away at this point, right. and they're just about to start the deliveries on the Plaid. So, like, you you don't deliver a hundred and twenty thousand car to someone, and then hey, by the way, we have uh, a fast one next year. The faster one that's coming next year. That uh, like you're like all right, like let's keep a, a lid on that until until then. Though, though I'm sure they would still sell plenty of them, just people that want to have that for a year and then upgrade to the other one next year. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of Tesla Model S Plaid for, for, for a lot cheaper <laughs> around this time next year for sale. Uh, that's that's just my my guess. But anyway, he went to the uh, to, to the, the drag strip and he witnessed uh, a Tesla Model S Plaid 
do a quarter mile run in 9.247 seconds at 152 miles per hour. And he said that there was a, a national hot rod association official there to make the time official. I didn't even know there were national hot rod association in the US and official ones, but apparently there is. And they keep up the those those uh, quarter mile times. And I mean, it's it's extremely hard to overstate just how crazy it is that this car is doing a quarter mile in in, in 9.2 because if if you look um i mean there's there's been like some some hot rod like just put together car that that, that can do that pretty easy that's that's nothing new on that but if you look at production cars like cars are actually in production that you you, you can buy new from manufacturers uh it's 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 nothing close to that like uh uh, the best time right now is the Bugatti Chiron Sport at 9.4 seconds, 158 miles per hour. Uh, but that that's a million dollar supercar, limited production of 500 per year, uh, or 500 total. I should say. I don't. I don't, I don't think that's even per year. <laughs> uh, and and again, it's a million plus dollar car with two doors. Now you're talking, and and then. The second one, you have to go back to the the, the Porsche nine uh, nine one eight Spider at nine point seven seconds, so significant difference, and that's also a million dollar low production car, or maybe not a million dollar, but I, I think I, it's I, a million dollar. Yeah, certainly over half a million. That's for sure. Probably closer than to to a million at this point, and um, and yet and. Yet you have the Mol S, which is a four-door full-size sedan that sits five people. Apparently, going to sit up to seven, though that the whole situation around that is not exactly clear yet. And uh, that thing can do it in nine point two. <laughs> I mean, it, it it is crazy. It is absolutely insane. Um, now. I don't know how much of an impact that's going to have on the MLS program, the fact that it's it's breaking those new records right now. Uh, of course, it hasn't made the news that much. Like it, it, it made like the, the, the electric vehicle sites this week and everything, including ours. Uh, I don't think it hit the mainstream yet so much. Probably going to happen more next week after the uh, the actual event and Tesla makes it official. But, uh, I mean, you remember back in the day when, when Tesla... Like did the insane mode and did a lot of Chris, a lot of Chris Plus, and all, all yeah. that stuff. That that was a big deal back then because like it's it's electric vehicles were still kind of new. Uh, it, it was kind of pushing the limits now and and making it at least on on that metric on the like straight um, quarter mile or zero to sixty acceleration. It, it was beating everything and keep pushing the limits further, and that that generated a lot of attention for Tesla. A lot of criticism too that people are like, yeah, who cares about zero to sixty? Can it? What, what can can it do on the Nurburgring and all that stuff? Uh, which I'm sure we're gonna see too. Soon. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I think I think we're gonna see some of those things as well. We saw um, Laguna Seca, right? There was a car. There was a. Yeah. That's where that picture's from, I think. Yep. Um, also, you should mention um, the uh, the Remac. Uh, you know, obviously that's not mm -hmm. a. a five to seven seat sedan, but um, that the concept two did, or the, it's now called the Nevera, um, did a, what, 8.6, uh, zero to 60. So mm -hmm. that is, and it just blew the doors off of the Ferrari. Obviously that's a two plus million dollar <laughs> yeah, car. That's not even a million dollar car. It's a two million dollar car. I know. It's, euros, I think. It's absurd. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Tesla's not going to have the fastest mm -hmm. car on earth, but it's good to see it's electric. Um, yeah. my takeaway from all this is like, it's over like the hypercar thing. Mm -hmm. If it, if it's gas, it's not a, really a hypercar anymore. Well, that, like, that's the thing. The supercar. Well, I, no, I think, are they putting the hybrids in the hypercar category? I mean, there's like, you know, that Ferrari it raced against had two electric, you know, front wheels. I did some research mm -hmm. on it. It's a, yeah. uh, hybrid plug-in hybrid actually. And it's got a hundred, I don't know, 200 horsepower going to the front two wheels. Mm -hmm. um electrically and then the back is like this huge hulking you know 10 liter or whatever um so i think like if the gas cars want to keep up for the, like the next couple years they're going to have to have some sort of hybrid electric i mean i think that the, i want to say the porsche had maybe not but 
the you know the point is like if you want to be a hyper car anymore you have to be electric that's just yeah all, all electric even that was, was yeah those focus um yeah i think i think i think it's a fair point but i think what people are are, are discovering too and uh, created the mall s for that because it's also just a utilitarian car like it's it, it's useful like it's it's not like a I'm not saying that the Remac is not exactly useful, but you know, you're not going to go do your grocery for the most part with that. You're not going to go on a road trip with that, or at least you're just going to do it with one other person. And even then, you're going to have a tougher time for your luggage. But anyway, it's it, it's more about the the fact that the, the this, these insane performance that we're seeing out of those electric cars, and especially the Model S, it's a consequence of uh, it, it's it's not. They're not necessarily trying to achieve that with the plaid. Maybe like they're they're trying to achieve it, but it, it, it's more it's just a result of trying to make a great electric car with a long range that's efficient. the The result of that it's going to be a side effect. You're going to have a car that accelerates extremely fast or can accelerate extremely fast if you wanted to, and and go extremely fast too. Uh, so, so I, I, so it's just showing you just how much better of a car you can make if you work from a knowledge platform from the ground up. Uh, I, I think that that's, but it's be, not my, my my main concern is is it becoming so much of a new normal now that people are just not going to care that much and like I, I don't know. I, I think they will. Like I think yeah. when this goes public, you know, hits the main mm -hmm. thing, sure. it'll be a big deal. And I think the you know as you mentioned, like the bigger thing is that there's no contest anymore like the electric cars are running away with the the high mm -hmm. end speed i mean that bugatti chiron that you know was close that is a crazy crazy car like it's completely crazy. over engineered too it's, right uh, it's, it's a beautiful machine but uh yeah you're right it's kind of, it, it, it kind of tell you that how much the internal combustion engine is is dead when right when even like if you're set out to build a million dollar car super over engineered with the best performance you can imagine crazy engine you still cannot beat the four-door sedan that yeah. uh that fits seven people in it yeah and it's got a frunk and it's got you know like yeah. like normal stuff like people are driving these all around the town you know it's not like this crazy i mean the chiron car, like tires alone were like some crazy like twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars each or something <laughs> Like what kind of level of wealth do you have to achieve to be willing to drive around on twenty five thousand dollars tires and wheels? That's, uh... Well, apparently, like if you want to go three hundred miles per hour, you, there's like one kind of tire that can spin that yeah. fast without blowing up. <laughs> that's fair. All right, moving on from Tesla news this week, uh, BMW unveiled the pricing on a few cars, uh, starting with the i four U.S. pricing, I should say. The i four, the twenty twenty two model so there's two versions of it sorry i didn't even write this article so i'm gonna have to just read it through a little bit uh to, to get the correct information but there's the uh so the it's coming in the first quarter of 2022 so it's going to be a um, model year 2022 coming in in actual 2022 sometimes it comes a little bit before but yet yeah, you have the first version uh do we have an actual name for that version yet yeah, the i4 e drive 40 so that's the version with um, an 83.9 kilowatt hour battery pack, and it starts at 55,400 plus a thousand dollar destination fee. Uh, before any tax incentive, of course, uh, the, the BMW is still eligible for the four, seven uh, seven five hundred federal tax credit. And then you have the performance version, which is called the i4 M50. So you have a sh little bit shorter, or same batch pack, a little bit shorter range, but you have a dual motor all-wheel drive, 536 horsepower powertrain on it. And uh, this one starts at $66,000, basically. So a little bit more expensive. Um, yeah, I mean, those are uh, kind of a Model 3 competitor, I would assume, right? It's... Uh, I, I think I think BMW is trying to market them as a little bit more high end to mm -hmm. the because uh, we know that Tesla has been stealing sales from the three series and the four series with this being the i four and a little bit bigger. I mean, I assume it's more like a, a four series competitor. But yeah, and the pricing is also closer to that uh, as as we as we now learned this week. It's uh, 
it's not exactly cheap. Nope. But uh, you know, I, I'm still looking forward to get into it and and see like because uh, this this is gonna be really the, the BMW's best effort in in, in more mass market uh, EVs. Other than, of course, the BMW i3, but the i3 was always just this. It it, it was stuck in this weird mobile era that, uh, as yeah. Elon Elon put it, the weird mobile. I think I think he's the one who coined that word, right? The weird mobile. Um. So I, it was never gonna just break through anything with that with that design, unfortunately. Uh, this is their new fifth gen. Uh, technology too so the the i3 didn't have that the mini cooper didn't have that this is this is the new fifth gen that was first introduced with the uh ix3 which unfortunately we, we didn't get here but uh now the i4 is the first one and at the same time you have the inex but the inex has been uh kind of a, a different scenario here like if you remember back in when it was first uh announced uh now it's the ix i should say but back then it was the inex and uh, it, the NW was marketing it as the Model 3 competitor. So we're extremely excited about that because especially that we know that the Model 3 was going to be a big hit for the 3 Series. So we thought they were going to finally, BMW going to release a 3 Series type vehicle to compete with the Model 3 and all electric. Uh, but then it didn't play out like that at all. Like the INX ended up being this this crossover when it was unveiled later. And uh, then the it became the iX last year. They unveiled the production version, which uh, I mean I, I know people hate on the kidney um, kidney grill and everything, but I I love the car. The car was great. But then later on, what what happened? And it's more of a crossover SUV. Actually, they they, they call it they're coming up with a new thing now. It's not even a crossover now. It's a sport activity vehicle, a SAV. Ugh. Is that a new thing we need to learn now? No, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna learn it. <laughs> okay, so but it really, it, it's like a small SUV crossover type vehicle. And the, here's the thing with electric vehicles too: people, people have a tough time calling thing an SUV. Like especially when it comes to the Model Y and the Mac Key and and everything. They're like, yeah, it's not really an SUV. At the end of the day, like all those cars come with dual motor, so you you do have an all-wheel drive with four by four, so it, you have that in it, and also, with an, being an electric vehicle, it's easier to have a bigger cargo space for uh, with a smaller form factor. Yep. So you do have a, a decent, decent like Model Y and and Mac E compete with with uh, full size SUV in terms of cargo. Like, at least some full size SUV or, or mid size SUV, like depending on how you classify those. So I'm not I'm I'm not one of those that like ah you cannot call that thing an SUV. I'm like ah it's a sport utility vehicle. Like it's it, it fits it fits the category. Now when when you bring another one a sport activity vehicle now I'm like all right no, I agree that you guys are pushing it a little bit. But anyway, so BMW indicated that that thing's gonna be closer to eighty thousand dollars. So that's what the that was a shocker here. I'm like what 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 you doing with that? Uh, that's uh, that's certainly not the Model Three competitor anymore. Not even a Model Y competitor. It's like uh. Metal less and better. Yeah. Price-wise. Well, yeah, price-wise, certainly. Now they confirm the pricing this week. It starts at $83,200 plus the $1,000 distribution fee. So that's for the iX X Drive 50 version. Uh, the i4, they already announced the M version, the performance version. They, the BMW, they haven't announced. Well, they, they announced that there's going to be one. It's going to be the... Uh, uh, IX M60, but the and it's gonna have over 600 horsepower. But uh, the the this is gonna just say they're gonna be coming later. They didn't say uh, what's gonna be the price or anything like that, or even even an actual timing for it. But the IX X Drive 50 is coming in uh, Q1 2021, also just like the uh, i4, and it's starting at eighty three thousand dollars. It is an extremely like luxurious SUV though. Like uh, it, it, it's good looking, and I'm paying all. all I know that a lot of people have issues with the Kine grill, but that, other than that, I think they uh, they hit the mark. It looks so. Nice. Can we talk about the grill a little bit? Because <laughs> like, why would they come out with the grill? You know, the super huge grill, knowing that pretty soon, like all their vehicles are going to be electric. It just seems like a weird design choice for BMW recently, and also that steering wheel. It's a very weird shape. It, is that upside down? Yeah. The steering wheel? No, I think it's just the octagon style. Uh, not mm. octagon, pentagon, or what do you call that? Is it how many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Hexagon? Was it? What's six? 
Sucks again. Uh, no, I like the interior personally. I'm a I'm a, I'm a fan uh, of BMW's interior. I'm just not a fan of that thing right there, right there. The dial that they always go with. Like I'm just I, I don't know where they, where they come come up with that. Like I'm I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So because of that, I I can I rely more on on the actual user experience, uh, the, the user interface of the uh, manufacturers. And um, when it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and BMW. I mean, the last BMW that I did try was the um, i3, and I just couldn't install it. The user interface. Uh, hopefully, they, they improve that with, with that, or I'm just gonna have to to deal with it and go with the, go with the Apple CarPlay, but which is not that bad. I just I think um, anything takes a while to get used to. Yeah. Like. Uh, I didn't like CarPlay at the beginning. Actually, I liked Android Auto more than CarPlay at the beginning, and now I'm starting to like CarPlay more. Hmm. Yeah, but you're one of those guys that always has a phone. an Apple phone and a, an Android phone with you and a testing boat. Uh, yeah, to your point, it, it's a choice that uh, legacy manufacturers have to do now in terms of uh, what they're going to do with the front end of their cars. Uh, it, it's very an interesting design study. Like uh, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some people in car design school that. Uh, or uh, are looking at the, at the trends on that front right now and see what, what people are doing in, in, in terms of um, transitioning their front end designs because a, a lot of uh, automakers that's um, part of their design language uh, either especially the headlights then the the way that they frame their logo uh, which most most often uh, revolves around uh, a, a grill. And now, because of uh, of the lack of uh, the need for large air intake, uh, you don't really need to have a, a, a grill that's uh, the, the front piece of your of of your vehicle's front end design. It, it it is decision decision time for those people. Are we going to go with the fake grill, which some are going with? Or are we going to go with a completely new design on the front end, the more flatter design? That's uh, um, we're talking more of uh, cars like. Uh, VW, they moved. Uh, they, they they made the switch, and then all their cars now are moving to a, a grill less uh, design. Yeah, it kind uh, of feels like the first generation. They do a fake grill. Even Tesla mm-hmm. had the uh, you know fair the point yeah. plastic thing. And then once that you know once they get used to, and they're like, why are we doing a grill? I mean, mm-hmm. the Chevy Bolt, same thing. Uh, this year's model doesn't have a a front fake grill. Every year up until now has had that. Um, I think yeah, Hyundai, I guess the, I'm trying to think of the Ionic 5. It's, that's kind of a weird situation. It's like all pixelated and stuff, but um, the EV6, the Kia EV6 also doesn't really have a grill. So it seems like your first generation, you throw a grill on there and then after that you you pull it off. So I guess this is considered to be BMW's first uh, real EVs. Sorry, yeah. I agree. I, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, or or it's just that they because there are other cars like the Kinley Grill is they, they they are very proud of that. Like it's 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 very part of the the design language for for BMW. So they felt like they, they felt we're we gonna keep that for EVs. It's it's part of our design identity, and, and they're going right. for it. That's that's what it feels like to me. And again, uh, but I'm on the side that I don't mind it that much. I know people are like, this is not even kidneys. This is like, uh, what do you call it? Like you call it rabbit teeth, I think, at one point. Yeah, it's the rabbit tooth design. <laughs> beaver? No, rabbit, whatever. Yeah, or a beaver for works too, I guess. Yeah, but uh, all right. So uh, we, we look forward. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to to test some of those uh, during the summer, late summer. Uh, we're even going to Germany in September. So maybe we can test them out there. I'm sure they're going to be available there before they're available in the U.S. in the early next year. Oh, yeah, we should start telling people now. Uh, Fred, myself, and Micah are going to uh, – well, myself and Micah are going to Eurobike, which is early September, like first couple of days of September. But we're Electric, generally speaking, is going to have a big presence at the IAA or EAA in German uh, auto show, which is the old Frankfurt auto show that's been moved to Munich and, and kind of reinventing itself as a mobility show. But uh, – we're, we're going to have a a location there uh, on the floor of the uh, the bike, you know, electric bike and mobility area. 
So that should be fun. If you're in Germany around that time, come visit. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. And I'm going to try to be at the Euro bike show too. I'm just, I'm a big fan of e-bikes too. And yeah. actually I'm going to cool. be a friend. Uh, I'm going to have a friend that's going to launch an e-bike there too. I think oh, maybe nice. not launch there, but going to present, present them there. So uh, I'm going to try to be there for that. Cool. I'm getting, I'm getting some news from the show. <laughs> All right. Uh, is that it? Or we have, More. Oh, we can we can jump into the the, the comments now. We're, I think we're All there. All right, cool. Uh, so Daniel Zazik Zajic says he's glad he can do live. Uh, get ready for a million questions. All right, here we go. Uh, I've never seen anyone change lumber in the passenger seat. Okay, that's kind of a joke, I guess. Uh, will owners of a Tesla semi need to purchase a Tesla DC superchargers as well? As well, AC would take forever. That's a good point. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely part of uh, of the, the the process. They they're gonna they're gonna try to have people install not a, not supercharger actually. They're gonna try to have people install those mega chargers at their locations. And uh, Tesla is focusing at first with co consumers that uh, um, clients that that have specific plans for the Tesla semi. Like they're gonna use it like between two specific warehouses or, or something like that, uh, distribution centers uh, and. Uh, They at those distribution centers, they're gonna install and make a charger there and gonna facilitate uh, facilitate the whole experience for for early customers. But long term, the goal is to also have those mega share chargers at truck stop so that uh, they can enable long distance travel and not just like specific routes. That's the plan. All right, David Morse says. Oh, wait, do we have a sense of how many how much EV? How much EVs are subject to the price increase of these materials compared to ICE cars? My instinct is the majority of both are composed of steel, aluminum, plastic, et cetera. Uh, he's That's talking cool. about the price of chips uh, being a factor. Well, I think I think he's, he's talking more general in terms of the price increases because uh, I mean, Elon did mention that it's not just it's, it's raw materials too. It's not it's not just the chips right. that are affecting the, the prices and that. So that's a fair question. Uh, So yeah, if we go to chip shortages, that's affecting both EVs and and, and ICE cars, and we we've seen like big plants uh, shut down because of that. And we just reported earlier today on this this news that came out that uh, um, I mean uh, Bloomberg was very nice to to to, to Ford, and we're like, hey, uh, Ford Mac is already outpacing the, the the sale of the regular Mustangs, which which is fair. It's uh, not the sales, actually, the production. But uh, when when you look into it a little bit more, a lot of that is actually because Mustang production has crashed because of supply of, of chips that resulted in the shutdown of the of the plant where the Mustang is being built. And uh, Ford has specifically kept more chips for the Mustang Mach-E than the regular Mustangs because it's a newer vehicle that's launching and they want the launch to be successful, uh, which is fair on their part. But uh, yeah, that, that explains the, this whole thing. In terms of uh, cost of, of things like uh, steel, that steel has, has gone up in price a lot in the last few months, in the last year. Uh, that's affecting all the cars that are made of steel. That's uh, that, there's no no doubt about it. Uh, in terms of, of of pricing, though, uh, that, that's the thing with Tesla. Like they control the price on on, on both sides, uh, while other automakers they sell to franchise dealership and the actual sell price. You have the MSRP, the manufacturer suggested retail price, and you have the price that's determined between the dealer and the, the end consumer. So, because of that, like a lot of it is is dependent on the demand too. So, so the it, the manufacturer is gonna have this gross margin, and the dealer also has this gross margin. So, be, because of those two different situations, you, you, you have two people that can make the decision of passing along the higher cost to uh, the, the the customer. So, it's it's a different situation. Really, it's harder to track those prices because of that too. But uh, to answer the question, price of all cars have been going up in the U.S. Uh, last year was a record high for average new car sale price. I think I think forty thousand dollars or something like that, for even maybe a little bit higher. It was thirty three thousand dollars just a few years ago. All right, moving on. Uh, Greg says Chevy is offering twelve thousand dollars incentives for the Bolt EV. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. That's the whole one. <laughs> yeah, that's the twenty twenty and twenty twenty one. But now the 22 is coming out right now. So that's kind of, they're trying to clear inventory mm -hmm. for that. Although um, there's also a uh, Costco $3,000 thing that just started up again. I think we're going to, I think we're waiting for a uh, an update from uh, Neil for the, the best uh, 
EV deals uh, post we do every once in yeah, a while. Yeah, if if you go on the like track and uh, uh, you go, is it an auto? Yeah, auto first one link, and then the first link on top here, electric vehicle price guide. You click on that, and then you uh, you have uh, my internet is a little bit slow for some reason right now, but you have a giant list here. Uh, you can search by manufacturer and everything, and we we're gonna bring you the best price in the U.S. based on your uh, local dealers and everything. It's a uh, very useful tool if you're not aware of it. We have Neil that works on that uh, tire tirelessly, trying yeah. to uh, keep the price up, up to date. Yeah, and and what's nice about that is not only you know some of those uh, great deals aren't going to be near you, but you can mm -hmm. take this to your near dealership and say, hey, look, this guy a hundred miles away is offering the, you know this bolt for this price. Why don't you match it? And you know theoretically. Uh, they will, or at least it's a good way to talk them down a little bit more. All right. Now, I feel like Elon Musk. We have uh, some scammer that uh, is uh, using a fake electric on Facebook, trying to uh, scam people out of bitcoins. If you can remove that comment, set the last, oh, no. the last one that just came out. Wow! Look at us. That means we're getting big now. If we have uh, scammers, this is the, second, the second week in a row we've had yeah. some uh, weird stuff. Yeah. All right, Shannon Sullivan says China would also hurt cattle sales worldwide. Uh, he's talking about if China's uh, punishing Tesla in the media. Also, if they're saying there's a lot of Tesla issues, fires, et cetera, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Shane, on that front, I'm not going to agree because, look, CATL probably can sell every battery cell they can make with or without tesla at this point like this like if if there's some companies i'm not worried about right now is battery cell manufacturers so I don't, I don't think i don't think china is is thinking it uh that way like oh if we uh if we screw with uh with tesla we screw with their battery cell manufacturer one of which is a uh, chinese based uh I, I, and again i'm not even saying that that's the case i think that the government is um screwing with tesla but uh if if they were, I don't I don't think they would worry much about that. But that's just my own opinion. All right, Spike Z forty three asks for your lumber support recommendations. I know that's. I mean, that's a personal preference. Is you you just yeah. have you have to get into your preferred driving position, and because it doesn't move your seat, the lumber like it, well, it moves it moves the air pressure on the on the back uh, of 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 your of your back. But um, uh, then, when as when you get that position, just find the one that keeps you the straighter possible, and it doesn't have much of an impact for shorter drive. But for longer drive, you, you're gonna feel it. Uh, well, actually, you're not gonna feel the drive, <laughs> which is the the goal here, because you know when you've been in the car for a few hours, you get up and you have a tough time with the shoulders and with your back, and that, that helps. All right, uh, Zapod Beeblebox. Probably not his real name. It says cool order food from a car touch screen. So that's talking about the restaurants. That would be yeah. cool to be order to be able to order from the touch screen. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, stuff there. Greg says he'd like a Tesla Bitcoin burger. Uh, I don't know. Elon doesn't really like the Bitcoin anymore, according to Twitter. Uh, Miles Davis says, can you see new charging architecture being adopted by the? By Tesla, 250 kilowatts is no longer the fastest, and Tesla aren't the type of company to stop innovating. Do you think it would be, already be announced for the new SNX? We kind uh, of touched on that last week, I think, when when we, when we discussed that. But uh, yeah, that that's uh, that's our that's our speculation that uh, well, either it's going to be announced for the new Model S with the Palladium architecture, or if not, it's it's going to be at least announced for the new uh, structural battery pack with the 4680. I think uh, I think that's fair. So it's right. one or the other. Yeah. Definitely the forty six eighty. If if not the Palladium already. Right. All right. Daniel Zajic says my friend really wants a Mini Cooper convertible. Is there an EV even close to that? Smart ED Cabriolet is the only one I can think of. Um, and I mean, a Mini Cooper EV is kind of close to that, but it's not a convertible, obviously. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of options are convertible right now, like. I've been saying it for a while. Like, a, I mean, a, it's not exactly Mini Cooper, but some kind of Mazda Miata that's all electric, not too expensive, not a crazy range either. Uh, you just you just keep it closer to like the forty thousand dollar range, and uh, you try to get it or a range of uh, closer to two hundred miles. Uh, I think I think it's completely doable. 
yeah and again just a two uh two seater uh two if you can squeeze a four like, which is completely doable too with an energy vehicle because of the skateboard platform uh you do it for sure and i, I think that would sell like crazy i know that electrica mechanica has been working on something like that for a while but uh, they had a tough time bringing the solo or their I don't know if you call it a car, but they're a three wheeler that they have uh, right. market. So they've, they've been focusing on that. But uh, if they can get over that, uh, not over that, like I saying, like put it aside, but if they, they can get rolling on that and then move on to, don't remember what, what, what that was called, but uh, it, it was a, a cool concept. And I don't know anyone else that's working on it. Yeah. I mean, there's some, you have to kind of stretch your mind a little bit, but like uh, Micah, uh, did a review of the uh, um, <laughs> not, not uh, one of his Alibaba stuff. <laughs> no, no. Well, yeah, there's those. Um, but the uh, FUV, what is that called again? The, oh, okay, uh, the Archimoto, yeah. Yeah, Ar Archimoto's got a uh, Roadster version of their three wheeler, which is um, it has two seats and it has a convertible version. So there are some options. You just have to kind of think outside the box there. Yeah. Um, and then is there saying with Sullivan, is there any more rumors of VW increasing the charge speed up to 170 kilowatts via software update? Uh, I have not heard that particular rumor. Um, and even if they did, it would probably only be for a few minutes. Um, it's, it's more about the charging curve than that, but we do know that Volkswagen is expected to announce a plug and charge update for their ID four, uh, which allows them to you know, pull into um, Electrify America stations and any station that supports plug and charge. And uh, you just plug in and, and charge and you don't have to pull out your credit card or smartphone app or credit, you know, whatever. So um, there's definitely some updates coming to VW. They've announced some, but they haven't announced the 170. Also, interestingly, this week, I found out that the, uh, the, Chevy Bolt that goes to Europe, the uh, Ampera E, is plug and charge compatible, but they they didn't put that on the Chevy Bolt in the U.S. It's crazy. Are they still doing that? The no, e? no, okay, I, I think they're done. Yeah, because I mean, Ampera is not even GM anymore, mm -hmm. or or uh, what? It, Opel is not even GM anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's PSA now. All right, uh, Tommy Co or KBH says, have you seen the Lotus Evija? Yes, we have, it's a beautiful car. 2000 horsepower electric, zero to 300 kilometers per hour in nine seconds. That is yeah. slightly, I think, faster than the um, Remac uh, Navara. So uh, yeah, we'll have to but see. It's also, it's also a million dollar car and and it's not it's not in production yet right it's, uh, yeah it's, 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 i think it's coming soon though i think it's coming maybe by the end of the year yeah and i don't even know if they have uh prototypes like is anybody ever no driven? they do have a prototype i think they did show it at the like driving it? yes okay goodwood or something gotcha that's probably what, where they would yeah. do something like that uh quarter mile on that is probably about eight and a half seconds Seth, have you seen Robert Scoble's predictions for WWDC with Apple setting the foundation for a move to a 3D world? What's what's it currently? 2D? <laughs> anyway, wonder will Apple Car finally be part of that? Yes, that old subject again. Uh, I think probably not. I don't think they're ready to announce anything. We haven't heard anything um, on 95 Mac either. So uh, I don't know if, I think, you know, not to get too far off subject, but I think uh, this year is going to be about augmented reality. So yes, the 3D world thing is is uh, relative, but I don't know if the car is going to be part of that. Might be. Yeah, normally Apple they they, they, they try to only announce things when when production is pretty close, right? So yeah, I, I think that it's going to be more difficult to do with a car without things leaking because, especially if they are not involved in, in making themselves uh, or right. or not not totally involved i mean not completely in charge of it uh and uh, so and and right now what we're hearing i think it's like 2024 like some of the rumors that came out like they that's when they would be looking to deliver that car right they were working with hyundai or whatever lucid has been rumored too right all right uh daniel's back i don't i doubt the i3 was ever meant to be a mass market product 
Yeah, yeah. It was a gateway for BMW going to electric sustainable. They followed that by wasting seven years, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, to be fair, the i i three was kind of a good experiment for for BMW for a while, and it did br- brought some interesting new development in uh, uh, carbon fiber manufacturing too. For like, uh, if you if I, I watch some of the manufacturing process they have for that that carbon fiber for that car, it's it's impressive stuff. It's very uh, beautiful engineering. Yeah, if they had iterated on it in the decades since it was released, they probably would have had a successful vehicle. All right. Uh, Heinrich says the iX is similar in size to the X5. Right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look the price of the X5, though, because that's what I was thinking, like how it compares with, because I don't think it's that, it's not a cheap car in the X5, but it's uh, also not uh, that expensive. I think it's more like... Um, Oh no! It starts at eighty-five. Ooh, okay. I was uh, for some reason. Oh, no, no, that's no, that's the IX. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa. Did I put a five on? Yeah, I put a five. Wait, <laughs> everyone is talking about the IX and not the. Oh, uh, because I I put the. Okay, the X five. Started at fifty uh, sixty thousand dollars, so yeah, it's significant. Twenty thousand. Yeah. All right, uh, probably an unpopular opinion, but finding it so hard to like the Ionic 5 design, we'll get one purely for the technology. Oh, wow, that, that must be nice. 800 or, volt or, battery. Or get the uh, Kia EV6. It's the same car with a different design. Yeah. Unless you, you like that one even less than in terms of design. Uh, 800 volt battery, but it's unique. Uh, I think I really like the Ionic 5 design. And part of it is because it's so unique like it's uh there's nothing really out there like it they did a lot of unique things and especially for hyundai who kind of has a reputation for copying stuff this was really nice to see them go out on their own there um but i haven't seen one in person uh we did uh scooter did the uh the in-person review earlier scooter dole which is his real name by the way we're not making up fake names here in the uh michael Oh, actually, uh, I pay scooter, so that's not his real name. It's it's Scott, but his last name is Dong. All right, <laughs> Michael K- Karkari says, "How many Model S do you think will they will deliver for next week event, and how long before we see real reviews of it?" Hmm. Uh, repeat that question. Uh, how many Model S do you think they will deliver for next week's event, and how long before we see real v- reviews of it? I mean, you're gonna see reviews probably for from Jay Leno and right. MKBHD, which are the two only people that uh, Tesla really works directly with now. Uh, and even the MKBHD, I'm not so sure like if he's gonna make the cut. Like, uh, he, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him. And other than that, I think it's gonna be from like people that actually buy the car. Yeah, uh, which which I don't dislike too. It's uh, it, it's a good way to do it. Or people that uh, um, will loan it to 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 reviewers. I know like uh, someone like uh, Doug Demuro, like often do does that. It will it will work with actual car owners and and review their actual cars. But uh, yeah, in terms of the deliveries, uh, Tesla has been sitting on some decent inventory that uh, as they they kept the, the validation process. Um, so. I think there's going to be a lot of service work on, on, on that front to to get those cars ready to production to to deliveries, but uh, at the delivery event itself, I I don't know, but I I would assume that Tesla will have a decent chunk of vehicles to deliver the the first week and and then ramp up production from from there. Uh, but at the, at the event itself, I have no idea. Like, yeah, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to tell. Know. Although they have been manufacturing them, I think yeah. there's quite a bit out there already. All right, Seattle Vienna says, how long will it take for Tesla to upgrade the existing V2 supercharger stalls to V3? I don't think they're going to upgrade all of them. I think they're kind of uh, just adding. I think that's what they said at first, that they were going to upgrade them, and then they realized, you know what? It's the the V2 are still useful, especially considering you have a bunch of cars that that cannot even take the V3. Uh, So... I I, I think they're going to do it as they, they see fit, and maybe you're gonna still see a lot of V2 around, uh, use more as like urban supercharger and stuff like that instead of long distance. All right, last question. Greg Pollan says, "Any more to say about the Karma GS6L? Beautiful car. I agree, it's a beautiful car. Um, 
it's a review we did last week. Um, <clears throat> so karma, you know, I'll try to make it short, but the karma is the same karma that Henrik Visker started a decade ago, about the same time Tesla was doing the Model S. Um, they had some serious problems. Their batteries uh, kept getting recalled and the battery manufacturer stopped. And then um, a bunch of their cars got hit in Sandy and the company went under. It got bought by a Chinese auto parts company. Um, the, you know, all the designs, all the factory, everything, even the battery company that was separate got bought by the Chinese company. Fast forward to 2016, they put out the Karma Rivera, which is kind of a similar um, look to the, the original Fisker Karma. Um, that car had some issues as well. But now the GS6 comes out. Um, they've kind of fixed all their little problems. They replaced the GM uh, motor with a uh, the same motor that's in the i3, sorry, the BMW i8, which is a um, kind of just a generator. It's kind of a, a, a Rex motor, like a, if, if we're using the parlance of the uh, BMW i3, um, it's a range extender. Um, but, you know, the, the fuel tank in the Karma is much bigger than the, the i3. So basically, uh, you're driving, um, you run out of electricity, and then the motor comes on or you can drive around with the motor on if you want. Um, and then the motor just charges up the battery and, and directly uh, sends electricity to the electric motors, which are in the back. So it's a rear wheel drive car. Um, so the car looks amazing. I, you know, a few people disagree with that, um, but it, it's not super practical. On the outside, I will disagree on the yeah. inside. Uh... Yeah. The inside's a little weird um, and it's tight. Like, I actually don't hate the inside design, but I don't like the the amount of space you have. The driver's seat's fine, passenger's okay. When you get in the back seat, it's like really bad. Um, they have the battery bar going down the middle of the car like the, the old uh, Chevy Volts used to. Um, so that makes a lot less room for the for either side. And then like in the back seat, you're just really tight. Um, and it's a huge car because it's got two drivetrains and two well not two drivetrains, but it's got a batteries and it's got a, a a big motor so um there's not a lot of room for people so they, they've traded it off but you know as far as plug-in hybrids go uh i think that's i think it's the best thing out there right now um mm -hmm. and you know driving around in a uh karma you're going to get the looks that you're looking mm -hmm. for if you have an exotic car but you're not going to get the the speed um it's it's not slow by any means but it's definitely not i don't even think it's as fast as like my tesla model 3. So uh, that's kind of it. It's a it's a bunch of trade offs. I'm you know I I don't have a ton of confidence in the uh, in Karma you know uh, surviving for the next you know five or ten years in its current form. But they uh, do have an all electric one coming that could be a little yeah. Bit more so popular. They have the the GS six E or GS E six or something. Uh, it's going to have a hundred ten kilowatt hour battery so that's quite nice it's going to have the same rear wheel drive the battery is not going to be skateboard like you would think it would be because it's a very flat car very like low to the ground car so they're just going to basically where the bmw motor is they're going to pull the bmw motor put in a big square battery pack and you've basically got the same car but that doesn't fall back on a uh, engine and we'll have about 300 miles of range so I don't know. Like I, mm. I personally wouldn't get one of those, but like if you need a gas uh, backup or, or you want to look, you want to be like the bell of the ball, you should get one of these. It's, and they're not that expensive actually. Uh, you know, the Karma's used to be hundred something thousand dollar cars. Now the GS six is I think 84,000 and the all electric one, which is weird. It's cheaper uh, is going to be 79,000. And then, you know, like seven seventy five hundred 7,500 federal. And all of a sudden it's a $70,000 car. Not, not too crazy at that price, but there are a lot of options on the price. So it's a competitive market at this point, the EV, sure. which is, uh, which is fun. It makes our, our job more fun. Yeah. <laughs> just, there's just, just two options in every segment. Now that you're getting, getting some option. All right. Well, that's it everyone for, uh, 
for the electric podcast this week. A big thanks to Volkswagen. Thank you for the all new all electric Volkswagen ID4 SUV for sponsoring this episode of the electric podcast. We're going to see you same place, same time next week. If you like the show, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. And um, if you're on your podcast app listening to us right now, you can give leave us a quick review uh, with a five star rating that helps the show a lot, gets it to push it to more people and uh, spread the EV revolution. Uh, we're going to see you same place, same time next week.